Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, this is uh, uh, kind of devastating for 25 states, 86 million Americans under freeze alerts. Into fall, a frigid blast blanketing swaths of the Midwest in white. Did you have to dig out the winter coat? We did. We just did to go for our walk tonight. We dug them all. And tonight, leaving 86 million Americans across 25 states under freeze alerts. I've never seen anything like this. This is super early. In particular, parts of northern Michigan and Wisconsin slammed with more than a foot of snow. White caps crashing on the Great Lakes. The storm knocking out power for thousands and closing schools. It's paralyzing impact stretching into Illinois and Indiana, where roads today were impassable. Snow falling as far south as Kentucky and Tennessee. The system's powerful punch landing more than two months before the official start of winter. East of the Rockies, temperatures are 10 to 25 degrees below average. Even seasoned locals shudder. And is it a birthday gift or is it a problem? Uh, it's a problem. Countless families forced to crank the heat just as heating bills are expected to hit a 10-year high, leaving some left to wonder whether this unseasonably severe cold snap is a sign of brutal winter weather to come. Is any part of this painful given that we're like mid-October? Uh, it's going to be a long winter. <laughs> a really long winter starting this early. And Maggie, joining me now, I know the timing of this storm made the impact much worse. Yeah, it sure has. My kids are in Indiana. Uh, I didn't know about that storm hitting Indiana and down that way. So uh, I hope I hear something from them probably uh, tomorrow night. Unless my daughter would try to call me when she gets up at 4.30 to go to work. So I don't know. But boy, hoo hoo. It, uh, it's all down that way, uh, mostly, and then coming up through, what they say, Wisconsin? Wow, it's just right on the side of Iowa, so we'll hold our breath. That's about all we can do. <laughs> My goodness sakes alive. A lot of places are sure getting hammered already. Mm -mm -mm. Now, here's one that I want to bring up. And this will be my last video for the night. Um, this is about the gas line that uh, was uh, bombed, that they're blaming us for. And uh, let me organize stuff here so I don't lose my camera. And uh, get this going here. Get that done. See if I can shrink this one up just a hair. There we go. Always got to get organized. Yeah, here we go, people. In a recent speech in Moscow, uh, Russian President Vladimir Vad Putin accused the West of sabotaging the Nord Stream 1 and Nord Stream 2 pipelines in the Baltic Sea to rupture. During the ceremony formalizing the annexation of the Russian-controlled territories in eastern and southern Ukraine, Putin blamed the United States and its NATO allies for blowing up the pipelines. Short time later, while speaking at the White House on the recovery efforts in Florida following the hurricane, hurricane Ian, President Biden took a few minutes at the end of his teleprompter remarks to address Putin's accusation. The president described the incident with the pipelines as a deliberate act of sabotage by Russia and accused Putin and the Russians of pumping out disinformation and lies. He urged reporters not to listen to Putin's accusations, adding, We know it's not true. And he vowed that the U.S. would send divers down to find out what happened to the pipelines. Despite the president's vehement denials, some wonder if the sabotage of the pipelines may have been the work of the United States, including Fox News host Tucker Carlson, who suggested on his show last Tuesday that the White House could have been behind the explosion. Now, Tucker Carlson, why would he do that? I watch him. I miss that part. Hmm. 
fueling the conspiracy are remarks Biden made during a press conference before Russia invaded Ukraine. In a press event at the White House just weeks before the invasion, Biden warned that if Russia invaded Ukraine, there will be no longer be a Nord, Nord Stream 2, adding, we will bring an end to it. I remember that. You remember that? Uh-huh. I remember that. When asked how the U.S. could end Nord Stream 2, since the pipeline was controlled by Germany, the boastful Biden said, I promise you, we'll be able to do that. I remember that now. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. At this point, there is no evidence that the United States or NATO was behind the incident. On its face, it makes no sense for either to risk escalating tensions with Russia, especially at a time when Putin is threatening to use nuclear weapons. But you can understand why the questions have arisen. This is the problem with destroying the credibility of the U.S. government and its institutions while tossing around the word disinformation like a fetty. Doubt inevitable creep. And that's it. Doubt inevitable creep. Something is not right here. You feel it. I feel it. But I remember that. I, I remember that. I don't know if I did a video when uh, Biden said that, though. I'd have to go through my videos. Yeah, but I remember him saying that. Reading it, I remember it. Yes, yes, I do. My goodness sakes alive. Good gravy just like a chess game with, with uh, China and Biden. And him and his son had dealings. This, it don't add up, does it? To me, to you, uh, to me it don't add up. No. Something sneaky behind the deal. Oh, this is a good one here, and I, I'm tickled to share this one. Yes. Let me open that up. Let me get this over here where I can do it. Yeah, bless his heart, you know. And I just uh, looked at an article and I'm going to get that downloaded for tomorrow's videos. Or I should say today. It's 3.51 a.m. my time, Wednesday now. And uh, But this is about Ron DeSantis. He helps at a local Waffle House. I thought that was so neat. Last Saturday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis cooked breakfast for first responders dealing with the recovery efforts in Charlotte County in the aftermath of the Hurricane Ian. Hurricane Ian slammed into Florida's Gulf Coast on Wednesday, September 28th, bringing with its brutal winds and rain, becoming one of the most powerful storms to hit the United States in history. The storm caused extensive flooding in Fort Myers, Punta Gordia, I think that's Punta, P-U-N-T-A, Gordia and other parts of Lee and Charlotte counties, leaving over 2.5 million without power. Bridges to barrier islands were washed out and roadways flooded. Following Saturday, DeSantis was at the Punta Gorda Waffle House. Punta Gorda Waffle House one of the first area restaurants to reopen after the storm, where he worked the grill like a pro, cooking breakfast for the linemen, restoring power in Charlotte County. I thought that was so neat. According to the government's office, 42,000 linemen were deployed to restore power in the affected regions of the state. By last Saturday, over 1,000 members of search rescue teams had made over 1,100 rescues Nearly 200 of those were done by helicopter. Last Monday, around 130 Florida DOT trucks began working on the construction of a temporary bridge to Pine Island off Florida's Gulf Coast. The governor said the temporary bridge was expected to be complete by the end of the week. But on Wednesday, the governor announced that the bridge had been completed two days ahead of schedule and traffic was once again flowing to Pine Island. By last Tuesday, only about 500,000 people remained without power. However, Florida Power and Light expected to have power restored 
to 95% of the affected areas by the end of the day on Friday. By Thursday, power had been restored to approximately 2.1 million people, and by Sunday, 97.79% of the power had been restored. I thought that was neat. And from what I uh, supposedly have already read, um, Ron DeSantis is just climbing that pole really, really fast for his work that he done for when I went, uh, I and hit, you know, I mean, he really tended to business. You didn't see Biden and, and uh, Vice President, whatever her name is, I keep forgetting it, uh, go to the border to tend to business, did you? No. <laughs> well, people, it's a short video, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to say good night. And I want to remind you again that you are a blessing. And God bless your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you sometime tomorrow or today late. Okay? God bless you.